As an update to bindings, uh, in this video, I'm going to walk you through the advanced binding editor. So we are going to follow on the same topics and the principles we have explained in the previous chapters. But in this particular case, I'm going to walk you through an example how to use the relatively new advanced binding editor in the UI to build the same bindings uh, without really dabbling into the JSON and the, uh, the full JSON of the dashboard and the syntaxes of binding. In this particular example, we are going to uh, look over a custom query binding and a direct query binding. Now remember, custom queries, again in this series, used to be called the static steps. Here's what we're going to be doing. We are going to do the most simple use case of uh, creating a toggle step based on a static uh, binding, uh, based on a static step or a custom query. And in this case, I can control this chart, the group by, by opportunity view or account view, and the measure being an amount with an opportunity or the count of opportunities if I select account. That is what we're going to use for the custom query binding using the advanced binding editor. And then we're going to go to the uh, direct query to extract the username who's running the dashboard dynamically and display it in this case in a text widget. So let's go over the these two queries uh, in the slides as a beginning. So first for the custom query I'm just going to walk you through how we're going to build it. We are going to uh, grab a dashboard, new dashboard. Um, you can skip the, the, the layout properties and, and some of the uh, transparent uh, widget properties and so forth. The main Im important part here is to focus on how we're going to create the custom query, this section. So we are going to create the custom query and we are going to label the selections, the display as opportunity view, account view. We are going to select opportunity name, account name, as a second column, we're going to select the measures. And we're going to select the sort. Here are some cheat sheet uh, tips just to uh, work around. And as a reminder of certain things like the dashboard properties, where you can set up the widget uh, default properties. If you want to set the transparent uh, property, you need to go to uh, custom. You can go to this bar. And move it all the way down and this will make the widget default property in this case the background uh, transparent but back to the main focus of this chapter of this video is to how we are going to create the custom query so we are going to list opportunity view account view as display the group by the measure and the sort by now the big change with the custom query in this case is we are going to directly read the group by from the data set that we are trying to use. So there is no mistake in the API name used and slash or we don't have to go to um, you know the, the data set and explore and copy the API name and kind of guess what is it exactly for opportunity name and what is account name, what is the name of the metric and so forth. As a reminder, since we are changing the group by of a query here we are binding it and the measure uh, and in cases of the chart type you will have to go to the column map section and replace whatever the column map under that query that you are binding and under the widget properties with null and we're going to cover this with the walk on or the uh, walkthrough exercise so here i have a new dashboard brand new dashboard so i'm going to skip the other things you saw on the slide as part of a bigger exercise in the actual academies. I'm just going to grab a toggle. Here's a toggle right here. This is a toggle widget. I'm going to grab it, put it on the um, dashboard. And just to help me understand which particular data set I'll be using as a reference, I'm going to grab a chart. And I'm going to grab that chart, put it right here. Now, for that chart, I will keep it simple. I'm going to click in the middle. And the particular data set, let's say I am looking for opportunities. 
So again, if you have not created anything before, you can always go back to the sales app. Hopefully that is the most or the easiest one to install in these orgs. Just install or create sales app. It should create an opportunities data set that you can use in this particular exercise. So I'm going to wait for it. And once it loads, all you have to do, for example, just give this query a name, call it op account view. And um, let's go and, uh, sorry, the measure, let's make it sum of amount. And the bars, let's make that opportunity name. You can notice that the API name now appears right here next to the label. So this is opportunity name and I'm going to sort it this end. So this is my chart. This is the one I want to control. So I'm just going to hit done and it's right here in my uh, chart widget. Now the toggle is going to emit the values that are going to control the group and the measure. So here we're going to go to the toggle. Click on the middle of the toggle and instead of selecting one of these fields, what you're going to do is click on change data set so you can go back. It's like going back and creating a new query. And you can go all the way down and hit create custom query. Again, this is pretty much your what used to be called or aka static step. Difference is when you click on it, you can see now that you can add columns. You can add up, up to 20, by the way, in one uh, custom query. And this is the display. So I'm going to hit right here. Let's call it opportunity view. It automatically creates the next row. I'm going to call this account view. Now here, for so again, this is what the user is going to see. When they click on this, I'm going to make this selectable. What are the values that get emitted behind the scene? So I can add, like I said, up to 20 here. So I'm going to add a column. But instead of writing it from scratch or trying to remember exactly what's the API name for to change the group, for example, I'm going to select that it is a dimension and it is from the data set that I'm using in the bar chart, opportunities. And first, let me rename this to group by. So I'm going to rename this to group by. So it's easy to uh, select or kind of identify. And then the first one is going to be my opportunity name. Notice how it's reading from the data set itself. So this is opportunity name, just reading the API name. And the second one is going to be account name right here. Now for the next column, that's going to be the measure. That's how we're going to control the column. Notice when I hit add column, I have an option to select the measure. And again, the same data set. And for this, for the first measure, I'm going to say sum of amount. For the next one, I'm going to say count of opportunities or count of rows again because this data set the grain is opportunity so the count of rows is pretty much count of um, the uh, rows or the opportunities notice how it says count of star so again if you didn't know this uh, because if you haven't looked at the JSON behind uh, the scene of a dashboard this is how we know it's count of star but it automatically filled that up for us and the last one because we have a sort and you're gonna notice the sort is actually um, specifies the metric being sort so we need to also dynamically change that so i'm going to go and this time call it a text and i'm going to call this the sort this would be the sort by and i'm just going to call here for example uh, by the sum and, and just to verify this to make sure you can always go back slide make sure that it's called so sum underscore amount and again that's because how the the metric is identified in the sort section and we will see it in the json second one it can only can easily be the count so we can leave it as count again just to verify right there count 
All right, so I have now the display and by clicking on one of these two values in the toggle, I will fire up all of these three, um, you know, any of these three values and I can use them anywhere and using bindings. So I'm going to hit done. This is my toggle. One more thing and one more tip. Um, it is recommended that if you are going to bind a group by or a measure section, you should make this as a uh, required selection. So you can go to the query section right here. You can hit query. Go down to selection type and make this single selection required. And the reason is you cannot leave the group by or the measure section as, as a binded uh, section, but uh, with a null value, it will give you an error. You could do a coalesce in the binding, but this is much more easier to do it this way. All right, so now this is ready for me. If I want to preview this, of course, there's no interaction because they are not connected yet. So let's go back and now try to connect. Now in the old days or in the old, um, actually the previous um, videos, you would see that we'd go to the whole JSON and try to uh, determine where is this query and find those lines uh, where we need to update it with the binding. But now all we have to do is just go to the advanced editor right here while you have selected the particular chart and the query associated with it. So you can go click on the advanced editor and you're going to see that I am focusing on the widget section associated with that widget, the particular lines, and also the query section of that particular query used in the bar chart. So I am, again, much more focused on ju just that particular widget, that particular query. And what I need to do, if we look at the query, and you can see it's an aggregate flex, this is the query section right here. And this is where I am going to be doing the bindings. So I have some the measure, sum of amount. I have the groups right now is name, and I have the order sum of amount. So we're gonna do one um, one at a time. So let's start with the groups, which is the easier one. And how do I build the binding here? Notice I have created interaction. This is gonna create the inter uh, the binding syntax. Notice the interaction result. And you're gonna see here the actual result and the values being passed, okay? All right, so first thing is, what is our source query? So our source query is the one feeding the toggle. Now, unfortunately, I just realized, I don't think I named it something, but if I click here, there's only two queries, and I can see that one is coming from the data set. This is the one we create for the bar chart, and this is the static one. So it by default called it static one, and another uh, very cool uh, capability here or feature is I can actually preview and make sure that this is the right query that I just created. And there you go, I can see the results. And as a tip, you can actually preview not only the static stuff, right? Any of these queries now you can preview them here and you can take a look at what are they, uh, what's the data behind them. So this is my particular um, query that's going to feed my binding so i'm going to select this static one okay it took me back to the previous selections so this is static one so what is within that um query so now it's within that query by default it's using cell what is it the source of my data so i once i select it i can say okay uh, i'm looking to update just the name so one selection, cell is fine in this case. I could change it, but for now, cell is fine. I can go and um, say, uh, so there's no row, row index, and I can select the column and so forth. Now, I do have another tip, or I mean, there, there are multiple ways to do this, but when you are using with the, within the groups and there is the uh, square brackets here, so it's kind of an array, it is okay, or it is recommended also to use the column, even if though it's just one selection, but I know uh, just from a formatting perspective. So I'm gonna go select the column. I'm gonna go select which column. Well, remember the ones we labeled them. So it's the group by, it's the group by. And I am already seeing that 
my binding is being formed right here and not only that I'm seeing the result the format so that is cool and what it's saying is we are looking at the static step we're looking at the column static step right now is a result so we'll change this later but I do recommend keeping in the beginning result sometimes you're trying to read a certain um, uh, uh, query and you might be using row or you might be using something and you don't know how the data or the values are being uh, coming back so it's good just to take a look at them and right now it says as string so I'm gonna ch change this to as column and just a tip um, if you've seen the other video this is as string then we should have seen double quotes here so um, we are aware of this we work on a little fix here but just FYI I just wanted to um, kind of point this out but for now this is looks fine is grabbing either name or account name so let me go back to select data and again I want the interaction to be selection so I'm gonna click on selection all right now it's only the previous selection remember this is the required selection this is the first one we selected name and now if I click on more options I need to change this to as column so I'm gonna go here and say as sorry as object so now I have column as object I have name this should be it this should be the correct um, and you can see now everything that's happening here now I'm ready to copy this so I'm gonna copy it's now copied I go to this section I will because again it's column as object I'm gonna take everything out including the square brackets put double quotes so that's very important it doesn't put the double quotes for you and we are going to paste it and here's my binding syntax formed for me I kind of got what it's doing I can see the trace right here and this should work now again remember we are changing the group by so I'm gonna scroll down or you can search for it here but you're gonna scroll down and you are going to see column map section right there towards the end now the easiest way to replace all of this by null and you can see why right because it's already having some of amount it has the name and this these will change dynamically and we can't bind this section so we're gonna hit or let me rephrase it the binding is not reliable is not supported in this section so let's go and remove this we're gonna pay uh, just print null or type null done under query so this is very important I did it only under query now I have to go to the widget section I'm gonna select this again scroll down somewhere you're gonna see column map and if I scroll down a little bit up or again I can search for it Give it one more shot right here column map I'm gonna collapse it right here I'm gonna erase this and type now now just a quick info why we do it under both in case you delete the chart from the dashboard but the query is still there and the query has the old column map and you drag the query back on your uh, dashboard then your widget properties will get recreated based on the query section and the query section has the column map without a null so you will end up with the widget having a column map not null so to recap it is not enough to just put column map null on the widget section uh, it will work but just to be you know uh, on the safe side do it also on the query in case someone deletes that widget down the road drags the query back into a widget and finds out that the the column map here got replaced all right so let's go ahead save and check if this is working i'm gonna click on preview and if i click on account there you go this is changing to account name this is opportunity view this is account view all right this is working now let's go and check also for the metrics because this did not change this was some of amount so I can 
repeat the same thing. I'm going to go to this widget, go to the advanced editor, and within the same, so this time again, it's under query, right? No more, nothing under widget. Go to the query, and I want to bind the measure. So again, I'll go to select query. It's my static step or custom query. My source data within that static step is, now this time, I'm going to use a row. And I will explain why. There are different ways, but the way we created the custom query has in it both the sum, amount, and count of star, and it stores it under two fields. So if you look at the row, you do want to select all. So we're selecting whatever is being selected um, if, under that row, those two fields. When you go to the columns or two columns, you're going to see that the measure field and functions sit in their own uh, fields. So if I'm going to select function first, notice how this is now sum, this is count, this is building the binding for me. I just selected measure function first. And now I go back and I can multi-select the field. So now that I have measure function, measure field, because that's how the custom query, this particular custom query works, it automatically lists for me that array of array. So I have two possible values because it's a result still, sum of amount, which it looks like this, by the way. If you, if you bring all of this on one line, it looks like an array of sum of amount. This is the same format because binding is not just the values also the format and count of stars you would have seen count of star if it was count of rows all right so we're almost done here we gotta change a few things this should be as object this should be selection so we're gonna go back here make it selection and make this as object and our binding is ready so again we will copy this Go to measures, move all of this or remove it. Don't forget the double quotes and paste. So this is the measures uh, binding to be dynamic at selection, whatever selection from the toggle. And we, we don't have to save this and go back again to do the, the sort, right? We can do it right here. At the same time, at the same time, all you have to do is say, "Okay, my binding is already here, so I can kind of replace it." Uh, I mean, again, I copied it. This is just reflects whatever you do here. So it's still the same static one. And in this case, I'm just selecting. Remember, it was a display, right? So it's just a simple cell. Because if you notice, I'm going to update here to show you different ways you update things. So I'm gonna going to bind only this, not even the square brackets, the simple string. So it's gonna be a cell, and it's the first selection. There's only one selection. Uh, there are two values, either the, the of the toggle, but again, the first selection, zero, column. Well, this is the one called sort by. Notice how it says could not parse, that's fine. Let's put sort by. Okay, sum of amount. Again, cell, it's a string because only the double codes. I'm not replacing any of the square brackets. I gotta change this as object. Let's go back and make this as string. Again, this will be fixed. This should have here, should be showing double codes to be correct 100%. And that matches what this one is. And if it was count, it will match the other one. So now I will copy this. Go back to my order right here, right section. And in this case, I don't even have to type the double um, uh, double codes. I can just reuse them. Paste it here. Cell static one selection as string. Okay, everything seems fine. Measures the group and the order. Now if I hit save and I go to preview, I can see sum of amount, opportunity name. I click on account view. There you go, count of rows and account name. And I've just changed the measure. I've changed the uh, group by dynamic. And there's a lots of things you could do within the same uh, concept, especially with custom query. Um, 
you know you can dynamically change the columns of tables you can dynamically ch uh, change what are you uh, showing top five bottom five etc so there's a lot of use cases in that particular scenario now our next um, example is regarding a direct query with a little binding so i'm going to show you again the slides a little bit so just to recap we created the custom query uh, binding group measure and sort we created the binding itself and we copy pasted it under the group and we updated the column map to null in both widget and query sections we also repeated this for the measure and the sort sections so that everything is binded and dynamically changing at runtime Now for the direct query, and in this case, we are going to use it to dynamically read the logged in user. So we are going to go and create a direct query. And the direct query is simply going and creating a query and you can select the object you are querying and then select the fields. I'm gonna use a table just for simplicity so we know what fields we are uh, grabbing gonna grab uh, ID username and maybe name and then we're gonna switch to the cycle section to type manually this dynamic uh, parameter where we're gonna say where ID is equal to single code exclamation mark user ID exclamation mark and this is will uh, give me the logged in user it's, it's gonna read the user ID that's logged in and then we are going to the dynamic query to read it and bind it to a simple uh, text where it says, for example, hi Ziad, here are your highlights. Okay, so let me show you this on the dashboard. I'm just going to grab a text right now, just an ABC text. I'll put right here, let's say, you know, hi. Here are your KPIs, or let's use capital letters, KPIs. All right, so we're gonna come back and bind this section, but I need the query that reads the user logged in. So in this case, I'm gonna go and create a query. It's gonna sit here behind the scene, so create a query. It is going to be a Salesforce direct query. And uh, of course it uses my user credentials if I can read into these uh, objects and their fields. So this again, the user, not the, uh, the typical cloud integration user profile. This is me user logged in. I'm looking for the user object. So I can go and see user object right here. And I have this nice UI interface I'm gonna call it, you know, user details. And notice it's reading directly from the object user. So this is a live query, not going through a data set. I can switch to uh, table mode, values tables. Let me go to edit columns or edit fields, select everything, unselect everything, and just bring a few things like uh, name, username, you don't have to again ID, but you know it depends on the use case. So I'm gonna bring this in. And now I have these three fields about me. I have to delete it, don't need it right there. Okay. So now that I have this and straightforward, and I have use cases where you might just want to read directly data. Um, what I can do is go to the cycle section again right here. And in this case, it's actually a kind of a, a SOCL query because it's a direct query. So I know we typically call this the SACL mode, but in this case, we're gonna call it query mode because again, a direct query, we are using a SOCL statement. And I'm gonna, going to add right here uh, from user where I can add this statement and just to make sure I'm typing it correctly. We're gonna say where ID is equal to, um, again, single code, user ID, single code. Okay, 
let me type it here where id equal again single code exclamation mark curly bracket user dot id we can do this for the user object fields um, you could use username for example or username but anything from user object again so this looks fine I'm gonna just switch between this and the next window let me run it and this should filter down on only the logged in user in this case my user and again this is for reference you can just type it it's as easy as this so now when I hit done, this query right here is getting me the logged in user. And I can use binding to go read that detail and feed it somewhere on the dashboard. And in this case, I'm going to use it in a simple text. You could use it in a filter, etc., etc. So let me go back to this text widget and I will go to the advanced editor and we'll try to build the binding for this section. Again, this is just a widget, there's no query, and this is the display, this is where we're going to try to add our binding right here. So let's go build it, same process, I'm going to go select user details, and I can see the, the preview here, if I want. So this is my user details, you can see things are starting to build up here. In this case, it's going to be just a cell, it's one thing, and... I'm going to return the first one. There's only one row. And the column I'm returning, let's use name. Okay, and I can see the name right here, dynamic. I can see the binding. And it is a result in this case, and it is a string. So let me go back just a bit. I will keep these. No need to change them. Set as default, by the way, add score less, but I don't need it here. And again, it's a cell, it's a string, because I'm just replacing it right here. The context of the JSON and the dashboard is just a simple cell, a string. It's a result, because there's nothing for the user to click on. It's a dyna dynamic result uh, sitting you know, behind the scene, that, that particular query. So I'm going to copy the binding, paste it here. No need for double quotes in this case, because it is sitting within a string so it already has double quotes it's just the binding evaluating to the name I'm gonna hit save and there you go i got my dynamic username on this dashboard so i hope with these two quick exercises um to show you the usability and the easiness of the advanced editor so once you get um around the, the syntax itself being formulated for you and you have the trace and you know where you're reading it from and you have the preview, then it should be a very straightforward to use. I hope this was helpful and thanks for watching this section.